This conference will now be recorded. Can anyone confirm me? Is that my screen is visible to you? Yeah, okay. Fine. I'll reshare the screen. Is that now it is visible? Yeah, thank you for the response. So we will be able to see with one Olvo company's model. So I'll share this information on the WhatsApp so that it will be helpful to you to read out and let me know what all the information we can be able to put it into the data and we can be able to use it for calculation so let me put it now give me a minute Okay, so you can see on the WhatsApp a file it has been forwarded. Confirm me whether the file has been received and it is able to get opened. Okay, so hope you people have been received. Please confirm me. Received. Please type it as received. Yeah. So let's see with the information what we have it. Good, thank you. Thank you for all your responses. Yeah. So yeah, it says that cost assumed here is taken for a single bus made by Volvo. The actual bus cost around rupees 70 lakhs. However, along with the vehicle, there are additional charges like registration, insurance taxes, etc. Also, since the bus be used for a higher purpose, we leave some margin for the accessories that might get added to it. Some amount will have to be spent on acquiring all in the permit to use the bus for transportation purpose. So all these additional expenses could go up to 5 lakhs and the company can incur 10% maintenance cost on the bus per year with the escalation rate of 15% yearly. Okay, so let's see that. What are the information we can be able to give it? So I have one predefined template, so I have to feed it up.
So I'll just forward that. Once after completion of our process, so after the session, I'll be sending it. So please try with that. Okay. So now let's see that. Yeah. So this is a predefined template what we have been prepared for giving the values. So here, what could be the information I have to feed it up? So first we are going to feed up with the relevant values based on the information what we have it. So on that basis, the numbers basis, we are going to prepare the other statements. So now what could be the cost of the bus? So please refer that document what I've been given and let me know the value so that it will be helpful to us to give the proper information over here. So what is the cost of the bus? Can anyone refer the document and let me know the values one by one? The 70 lakhs cost okay. of the bus. So actually the cost of the bus is 70 lakhs. So that is only the bus value we are also we have to spend certain amount so if you see here here it says the cost of uh, assumed here it is taken as a uh, 70 lakhs but whereas we have to bear certain types of uh, expenses so that it is going to be that 5 lakhs also will be considered as the cost of the bus so the total value of the bus it is going to be 75 lakhs so thank you for the response one. So actual value of the bus, it is going to be as 75 lakhs. So the next thing is maintenance per year. So what is the maintenance we are going to spend on it? So here it says that the company can incur 10% of maintenance cost on the bus per year. So where it may increase every yearly at 15%. So that means the maintenance cost will be 10% of the bus value per year. And the escalation rate of maintenance that is every year it is going to increase at the rate of 15 percent okay now what is the life of this bus so due to excessive usage of the bus it is assumed that the life of the bus will be only for four years Okay, now, so when you are going to say that the life span of this asset or the bus, it is going to be four years, then what could be the depreciation rate? So that means, so based on the number of years, it is going to be 
calculated of its life so it is going to be divided by 100 so what would be the value can anyone try to get me the value for four years at what percentage it may depreciate Hello. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. Yes, so the depreciation it is going to be. Can anyone calculate it for four years? So that it could be 25%. Okay, so every year 25% it is going to get reduced. Is that everyone are clear? Please type it as clear. So thank you for the responses. Fine. So now we will see with the further information. So the next thing is assumptions of financing. So let's see that what what else the information we could be gathered over here. So the income tax department follows the written down value method of depreciation uh, method. Okay. So the specified rate of uh, depreciation is forty percent in case if it is done with the uh, WDV method. Okay. So, but we are going to follow with a straight line method. So, we are going to specify it as 25%. However, looking at the working conditions and usages, we assume it the useful life of the buses at four years. So, this was all information about the depreciation calculation. The next thing is the company couldn't purchase the bus through its own cash reserves, it needed help from the bank. So that means they have taken the loan. So the company has to loan 75% of the total cost of the bus. So the rate of debt is going to be 75%. And if it is 75% is going to be the debt, so what could be the equity? That is the amount what they bring of their own. So that it will be 25%. And what is the rate of interest for bringing that amount as a loan? It will be 15% as interest rate. So let us specify it as 15%. So the next thing is the tenure of loan. So for how many years the loan has been taken? So the tenure of loan is four years only. So let us specify it as four years. Then what is the cost of equity? So the cost of equity is the high yield as you assume this is done on the purpose to check if this project lies higher up on the investment opportunity schedule that is. So what could be the expected return of investment? So internal rate of return, you can say. So the expected is 20%. Okay. So even in the last uh, case study also, we had been taken as 20%, but we were been able to uh, calculate it and we were been able to get that. 
at more than 20 percent so it was nearly 32 percent what we got it internal return of return rate of return so this time so we will see that whether we can be able to go more than this 20 percent so the next thing is so generally what are the other information we can be able to gather it so the tax rate is applicable so the interest rate value of expected to be high as the vehicle the repayment schedule is going to constant amount to be paid every year you also have the option to pay back in the lump sum okay so the bank insisted to pay some amount every year so the cost of equity is 20 percent yes so the next thing is once the bus service starts uh it has a 35 seating capacity with a load factor of 50 percent so let's put this information so this information it is going to be under the operating revenues so let us add this so the seating capacity of the bus is going to be 35 then the load factor so the load factor is in case if minimum if it is going to be loaded at 50 percent so what could be our revenue the next thing is the tariff or the ticket price let's see that what is the ticket price so the mileage is only five kilometers per liter total distance from mumbai to pune and back is around 360 kilometers okay so here i'm going to make certain changes so the calculations it is going to be uh, higher than the value so here i'll make it the distance kilometers traveled instead of 360 i'll make it as 155 okay so there are certain changes uh, actually were supposed to be done and the time taken from mumbai to pune to reach it is going to be three hours per trip and the volvo company works only for 12 hours in a day so that is nothing but so 12 divided by 3 it is going to be 4 trip per day so let me add that information so 4 trips per day yes so i'll reshare this uh, document once again to you people so that it will be helpful to you with the uh, the changes what we needed so i'll put all this information on the side of the uh, route so the route is going to be mumbai to pune the distance traveled over here is 155 kilometers and the estimated time hours so per trip is going to be three hours and the trips what we are going to travel is four trips per day okay yes so the next thing is also other cost to be taken like driver cost is around thousand two hundred it has been given so it will be higher the value so let me change it to six hundred per trip
for every Mumbai. Okay, so let me take out this. And the toll price to be paid per trip. So let me bring it as 800. And the miscellaneous charges. So let me put it um, as 300 per trip. Okay, this is fine. So these are the small changes what have been re redone with this. So miscellaneous includes the cost, which includes the parking the bus in a shed. Amount acts as a buffer and also takes into consideration the cost associated with the code driver. So let me put all this information over here. So our fuel capacity is five kilometers. The driver cost it is going to be as uh, six hundred. Then the miscellaneous cost, what it is going to charge us, 300. And uh, the toll price is going to be costed at 800. Yes. So now, to generate the revenue, Volvo decides to charge 350 rupees per person. So this could be the ticket price. And due to inflation, they plan to escalate the ticket price at 10%. So that means the ticket price is going to be 350 and the value it is going to get increased at 10% every year. So the next thing is, we will see, is there any information further? So the diesel required by the bus is charged at 64 rupees per liter with the escalation rate of 15%. So let me put the diesel rate is 64 and the increment of diesel price at 15 percent per year then inflation also includes the driver cost and the miscellaneous expenditures so that means there is an increase of 15 percent on the driver cost as well as on the miscellaneous so let me add this so here it is specified at 15%. Okay. Now, assume that tax rate is 5%. It is 5% and the interest income so the income generated from this business will be reinvested on some other uh, business to make the additional income at 5% income. So whatever the amount, the profit you may receive it through this business, on that amount, you might be invested on something else and you may be expected with 5% income okay so we will see that how the calculation we can be able to do it on this and debt 
value is going to be 75 lakhs into the 75 percent so here the debt value what we have been given is 75 percent so let us calculate with this so which comes up to 56 lakh 25 thousand so this is going to be the table of information to prepare the reports for this case study so is that everyone are clear till here so please type it as clear or in case if you are not clear with anything please let me know what it is Hope the screen is visible and you are able to see with the values. Okay, thank you, Gavya. Fine. So now, based on this data, let us prepare the table of data. Now, so what will be the revenue? So you all know that the revenue will be. calculated based on the sale of ticket so what is the sale of ticket equals to 350 into per day there is how many trips so per day we can be able to do with four trips into 50% of accommodation into 350 into 35 divided by 2 into 4 trips into 365 yes so this is how the value to be calculated so i'll just repeat it so 350 is one ticket price into 35 is the seating capacity of the bus so as we are calculating we are doing the assumptions over here if in case if there is a 50 percent of the load so if the 50 percent of the uh, bus it has been filled up for one trip and every day there will be a four trips done into 
365 days. So this gives us a value of 89 lakhs 500 rupees. Okay, so now it says that every year there is an increment of 10% on the ticket price. So in that case, there will be increase of 10% revenue comparatively to the previous year. So if you remember, can you tell me that how you can be able to calculate a 10% increment from the previous year? So since you are done with a lot of uh, income statement or uh, balance sheet, or it could be cash flows uh, statement. So we have been done with the case study also. So let me know that how we can be able to increase a 10% of increment on the revenue comparable to previous year. Please, anyone try. So equal to uh, the previous year amount. Okay. Equals to previous year. No. Very good. Uh, bracket one plus. One plus. Percent. So ten First bracket. percent. The bracket. Good. So this is how we are going to calculate the escalation rate. So the value comes for the end of the year as one crore nineteen lakhs two thousand four sixty eight. So the next thing is here it says that interest income on surplus cash. So that means other income can be generated only when we know that how much cash do we have it and the excess cash only we can be able to calculate it with the additional interest so additional income we can be able to expect it okay so as of now we will not calculate the value for this so we will leave it blank so the next thing is we are going to calculate with fuel cost So this will be equals to, so what is the fuel cost as per the data? So hope everyone are able to see the screen. So let me know what is the fuel cost. So what is the fuel we are using it in this bus? No, it is 64 per liter. Okay, 64 per liter. Then into so the bus travels 155 kilometers divided by the fuel efficiency of the bus so it gives 5 kilometer per liter so divided by 5 so that means it gives the value of how many liters has to be spent per one trip Okay. Into so the estimated trip per day is four into three sixty five. So I'll just show the value once you can have a look on it. So 
let me know in case if there is any confusion so it is 64 liters sorry 64 per liter and the bus travels 155 kilometers divided by 5 so that gives how many liters of fuel is required for one trip and the bus travels for four trips so that gives for how many uh, liters of petrol has been consumed for one day and how much it has been consumed per year with 64 rupees per liter so that is 28 lakhs 96,640 rupees so now whether is there is any changes in the fuel cost every year Is there any increase in the value of fuel cost every year as per the data what you have it on the screen? so it is increased by 15 percent yes so we are going to increase the value from the previous year into one plus 15 percent good so we'll drag the value so the next thing is the maintenance expenses so what could be the maintenance expenses so maintenance expenses is going to be based on the revenue so whatever the revenue you have it of that year on that there is a 10 percent of expenses so it has been given over here so the company can incur 10 percent maintenance cost on the bus per year on the revenue of the year okay so let me add this with the escalation rate of 15 percent yearly okay so this will be equals to the revenue value is 89 lakh 42 500 into 10 percent so 8 lakh 94 thousand so will be the value equals so there is an increment in the percentages one plus 15 percent so every year it increases so hope you people have been understood with this so please uh, refer the table data what you have it in case if you are confused you can be able to refer that case study what we have been read out okay so this is going to be the maintenance expenses value the next thing is the driver cost So what is the driver cost over here? So the driver cost is equals to 600 into 
four trips into 365. So that comes up to 8,76,000. So we have already given the driver cost per trip into four trip a day into 365 days a year and this is going to be increased with a 15 percent so let's check it out in the case study that you can see that inflation rate also includes the driver cost and the miscellaneous expenditure so the escalation rate the inflation rate is going to be 15 percent which we have been seen over here so we are going to increase with 15 percent So ten lakh seven thousand four hundred is the value. So we are going to calculate the same for the other years. The next thing is miscellaneous cost. So equals to miscellaneous is three hundred. into four one trip is 300 into four trip into 365 so which comes up to four lakh thirty eight thousand and again it is a 15 percent increase in the miscellaneous cost accepted and bring the value for the other years okay so the next thing is so the total amount is equals to 800 into One trip it is 800 into four trips into 365. So, which will be calculated at the value of 11,68,000. And here the inflation rate is applicable only for driver cost and miscellaneous cost. So, there is no increment in the value in the total amount. It is going to be the same year for all the four years so this is how the calculations of all the expenses to be calculated and the cost of revenue will be So equals to sum of all these values. So which comes up to sixty two lakhs seventy two thousand eight hundred and ninety. So this is the total expenses what you have it. and to calculate the gross profit you are supposed to take the value of revenue equals to revenue value minus the cost of revenue
So the gross profit value is the revenue value minus the cost of revenue is nothing but the OPEX value, whatever the expenses you have been seeing to get that revenue. So the next thing is the depreciation value. So how do we calculate the depreciation value? So can anyone let me know that how do we calculate the depreciation value? So you can refer the table also and let me know. Can anyone try to calculate the depreciation rate? So is it 75 lakhs into 25 percent? Yes. So as we have seen that by using the straight line method, so we are going to deduct at 25 percent per year. So the lifespan of the bus is going to be four years. So we are going to calculate at 25 percent. So per year. So the value of the bus is 75 lakhs. into 25 percent of every year so that comes up to 18 lakh 75 thousand so this remains the same for all the four years good so the next thing is interest expense so on what we are supposed to pay the interest so on what value we are supposed to calculate the interest at what percentage so refer the table data and let me know. So please refer the table and let me know what is the debt value on that what is the rate of interest to be calculated. So here yeah, the interest is going to be on the loan. Yes, my word. So uh, the debt value will be twenty five thousand. On that, we have to calculate the interest of 15%. Yeah, on 56 lakh 25,000, that is a loan amount. So, and that it is, uh, it has to be paid at 15%. So, now here, if I refer the data, so it says that you are not going to pay the amount, only the interest amount, you are going to pay that amount with the repayment schedule so every year you are going to pay certain amount and in case if it is possible you can be able to pay back it lump sum at the end so that means they are talking about you are not going to pay the amount the same amount every yearly 
so you are going to pay it on the uh, repayment schedule so in that cases so we have to calculate the debt schedule so if you people remember this what we did in the uh, third or fourth class so how do we prepare this debt schedule as i informed in the beginning so each and every classes whatever we have been discussed earlier so that it will be implemented in our case study so hope you people remember with this how to calculate the eai or the debt schedule for this four years so please give me a minute i'll be back Sorry for the inconvenience. Okay, so hope you people can recollect what we have done. How did we do with the debt schedule? Can anyone at least try? So what it could be? So before starting, I just explain to you. So it is uh, BOP debt. It is nothing but the beginning of the year or uh, beginning of period opening balance of the debt. EAI stands for equated annual installment than interest expense. So EAI is going to be a combination of interest plus the principal amount. So if you are going to calculate the EAI, so the interest will be calculated separately and the difference of EAI interest is going to be the principal repaid and EOP stands for end of period. So at the end of that, financial year so what could be the left out debt okay so can anyone try at least so that we can do the calculation so years um year zero ending of period amount is 56 lakh 25 thousand is the loan Very amount good, good. 56 lakh 25 good and, and year We'll begin with the year zero ending balance. Very good. And EI is uh, equal to PMT. Yes, so equal to PMT. Rate is uh, 15%. 15% rate. Then? Four. So N per is four years. Then the loan amount fifty six lakhs twenty five thousand. Good. Zero. Yes. Comma zero. Zero. Very good. So, but it comes with the negative value. So we have what to we be able to do it. Yeah. After before PMT, we have to put minus sign. Yeah. Good. So the next interest expense calculation will be equals to and loan equal to uh, loan amount so at this that particular year that particular year whatever the opening balance is there on that so it will not be the interest amount the same every year so on that particular year whatever the opening date value is there so on that opening date value only we are going to calculate the 15 percent of interest 
Okay, next. Principal repair is e, EI minus interest expense. Yes. Ending of period amount is BOP minus principal repair. Very good. So by calculating for the first year, so you can be able to drag this at the end of the year so that the value is going to be zero. So now we got to know what is the interest expenses it has occurred. So that we are going to bring it over there. Okay, so how do we bring? Equals to the interest expense value and drag it. Good. Thank you. So the profit before tax, it will be calculated with equals to the EBITDA value minus depreciation value minus interest expense. Okay, so this is how the PBT value will be calculated. So the next thing is income tax. So income tax rate is So let's check it out. What is the interest rate on the, sorry, what is the tax rate? So the tax rate is 5%. So here, since the first year we are in the loss, we are not going to calculate the tax because income tax is only when there is an income not on the loss. So we'll take it as a zero. The next equals to the profit before tax into 5%. So for the rest of the other years, it is income. So we are going to collect the income, income tax. And now the profit after taxes equals to profit before tax minus zero. So it is going to be the same. So this is the PAT or net income of that business for all the four years. Is that everyone are clear till here? Yeah, so we'll go for the next financial statement is balance sheet. So cash balance. So what could be the cash balance? We can get it. So to put the cash balance, we are supposed to do the cash flow statement. So which we will do it later. So as of now, we will keep the cash amount blank.
we'll see what is the pp gross value pp is nothing but the asset of the company the asset value is nothing but the bus value so that is going to be 75 lakhs so which remains the same because we are not investing any extra money in the business so we didn't buy any other asset so we will keep it as the same value for all the years okay so from the year zero onwards so please make sure that when you are preparing the income statement it will be from the first year onwards because from the first year only we can be able to calculate with the income whereas the balance sheet value it is going to be started from the year zero because the values has to be carried forward from the previous year ending and we have to carry it as a opening balance okay so the next thing is depreciation so only depreciation value it is going to be as 18 lakh 75 thousand so in the year zero we don't use the asset so it will be zero and in the year one the accumulated depreciation value will be equals to previous year value plus the current year depreciation value which is there in the income statement so this gives the accumulated depreciation value so i'll repeat it once again equals to the previous year plus the current year depreciation value so this gives the accumulated depreciation value so which i will calculate it and make it at the end of the period so it is going to be equal to the asset value so pp net will be calculated as equals to pp gross value minus accumulated depreciation value and this if you see at the end of the period the asset value it is going to be zero okay so the total asset value will be calculated when the cash is found as of now what we can do it is we will just calculate with the blank value equals to the cash balance of that year plus the asset value of that year that is the asset net value so it will be the same value as of the assets now because we didn't calculate with the cash balance okay so next we will do with liabilities so the liabilities value so it is asking us what is the debt have it for that year so actual debt whatever we have been brought it was how much did we buy the debt did we take the debt Fifty six lakh twenty five thousand yeah fifty six lakh twenty five thousand okay but whether the debt value is going to be the same till the end of the year or it has to get clear whether we are paying that amount every year with certain part of amount or we are keeping it every year same debt amount and we are clearing at the end of the period the fourth year we are paying at lump sum so how we are paying 
so this debt value calculated value should be connected with our debt scheduled value so that is equals to the end of period debt value so we were paying some installments so based on that installment so at the fourth year we had been cleared all the value so if you people observe the EOP debt value from the debt schedule has been connected to the debt or under the liabilities in case if you don't calculate it with the debt schedule value then you can be able to take the same value or divide it into particular percentage value and you can be able to clear the debt okay the next thing is equity so what is the equity value we had so out of 75 lakh 75 percent was debt value and the equity value was 25 percent that is equals to 75 lakhs into 25 percent so which comes up to 18 lakh 75 thousand so the equity value there is no changes we didn't increase any value so this remains the same for all the years okay the next is the retained profit so equals to the profit of that particular year it should be calculated including the previous year profit okay so year zero there is no profit we will keep it as zero then in the first year so we'll calculate the profit plus the previous year profit so since we were in the loss in the first year so it remains as a loss so year equals to the previous year plus the current year profit so this gives the retained profit of that year then the third year it is going to be the same the previous year plus current years profit and the same for the next year so now let us calculate with the total liabilities so this will be the sum of all these three values so which gives the total liability value so always the balance sheet should be balanced between the total assets and the total liabilities so let's keep it equals to the total asset minus total liabilities so which should give me the zero value so let's see that so 
so there is a difference in this that you should be able to get this values in the cash balance so that you can be able to match it both as a assets equal to liabilities value okay so we will end up today's session with this and i will be sharing this file to you on the whatsapp group i want you people to try it out with cash flow statement and be ready by tomorrow before the session so that we can be able to continue with this and we can find out what could be the cash as well as what could be the irr so try with all these values if possible is that clear i'll reshare that uh, the case study information once again to you people sorry for the inconvenience so hope you people were able to see a, a new kind of a concept in this case study so you can try and let us know is that everyone are clear till here fine so then thank you all have a wonderful time bye thank you so much thank you